Hello and a very warm welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now, this week, we look at how to make it in the security business. We meet an enterprising woman who has fashioned a 100% female black-owned security company. Quite a feat in the security business. Her customers include Telcom, ESCOM and the National Prosecuting Authority. How did she do it? Well, she's here to tell us. Welcome. Um, the security business, particularly in South Africa, is still a very sort of macho industry ex-soldiers, ex-policemen, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, how um, does it feel to be in it, to be um, a, a, a black woman in this industry? Um, sure, I can say it's, it's still a very, uh, uh, well, you're quite right, Chris, uh, the security industry is very um, male-dominated. It's still very tough um, uh, for women to, to penetrate that, that industry. It's been three years now that I've been on my own, and um, challenges are still there particularly because of the gender. But um, you know, when your mind is made up to say, this is what I want to do, and when one is determined, you know, nothing, nothing is impossible. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Notando Boloi. I mean, okay. whereabouts did you grow up? Your parents, mm -hmm. uh, were they pushing you to be your own boss one day? Um, I never ever in my life thought that I would end up um, being an entrepreneur even though there's certain things that happened in my life growing up when I look back now, that you know what, I think uh, those were signs of, of that entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Um, I grew up in Pinville in Zone 7 in Soweto, uh, brought up by parents who are very overprotective. Both of them are teachers. Uh, my mother is a, um, a headmistress of uh, Junior, Bertram's, um, uh, Junior, uh, Junior Bertram's primary. And uh, they were quite strict. And I'm grateful for that. At the time, there was a time when you know when you even questioned to say, "Is this my mother?" I think she was too harsh. Um, I'm grateful for that because that's what molded me to be to be where I, where I am uh, today. So that upbringing of 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 um, overprotective parents taught one discipline at a very at a very early age. And you you grew up. You went to college. You came out, but you worked for another company for about eight years in yes. the security business. Um, uh, yes. Uh, after high school, I studied marketing uh, with IMM. Did marketing management with them, and um, I started working in a, a service industry in a banking environment. That's when internet banking first started. Was was with Standard Bank, and um, I still. I was still passionate wanting to get into, into this marketing uh, uh, industry. Things were still tough, experience, even though I had the qualifications, but we we're still looking for, um, uh, for experience. I left the bank, I joined Discovery Health as a corporate accounts manager, but still wanting to, to get into the FMCG industry because that's where marketing is, 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 is dominant and, 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 and exciting and challenging. And up until an agency approached me and they said to me, We've got a, 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 a job for you in a security industry and they're looking for a marketing manager. I told myself, you know what, I, I made it clear to this lady, I'm not interested in, in joining a security company. I don't know anything about security. <laughs> what am I going to do there? <laughs> she said to me, you've got nothing to lose. You know, just, just, just take it. I think that's when the journey started. Then, um, but how did you take to it? It must have been a big change from a corporate manager at the, a, you know, exactly, a health company. Exactly, but I thought to myself, maybe that's where in terms of, of me being involved in marketing, uh, that's where the doors are going to open for me. I was excited. I thought, okay, well, I've got nothing to lose. Let me give it a try. Discovery Health was still happy, uh, help, well, they were still happy to have me there. They said, if things don't work out, please do come back. It's a tough business, though, security, is it not? It's very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a very difficult business. You're dealing with people's lives, your, their property. How did you take to it when you came from this other corporate environment at first? Um, you know what, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience that one um, received when I, when I was working for Discovery and I was working for, for the bank. Because any other business, doesn't matter what business you're involved in, there's just certain basic things that one should be aware of. And since one is dealing with customers, it's important to know how to service customers. Because any other industry, um, as I'm saying, it doesn't matter whether it's the security you're dealing with customers. Now, if you don't have that foundation of customer service, which I got when I was working for these other companies, um, your business won't, won't go anywhere. So that wasn't a waste. 
it, 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 was a, it was a foundation. Isn't it like journalism in a way? I mm -hmm. mean, w you could argue that we, we do office jobs, but I could yes. tell you for nothing, journalism is rough. You have people phoning you up, complaining. It's all about emotions mm -hmm. and people's personal lives. Uh, isn't it the same with security to an extent? Definitely it is. And uh, as you said, remember, we're dealing here with people's lives, protecting people's properties. And I think what's even more challenging is that your staff represent you. Um, when you employ people, it's important that you do thorough screening. Nevertheless, you can st still do a thorough screening, but if your guys want to get involved in all sorts of things, and it, it reflects on you as a person. So that constant um, uh, uh, training and, and being in touch with your staff is, is very important because they are there, there as, as the face of, of your company. What was that moment after you'd worked for the security company for eight years when you decided, this is it, I want to go on my own? Um, I think, well, I would say what pushed me more is my personal challenges that I had at the time. And um, I'm glad that I, I had a boss who was very supportive. And I think seeing that he was somehow wanting to, to move away from this industry, I, I sensed that. And um, I thought to myself, you know what? Because you could see that his interest was investing in, 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 other, in other business, in other interest. And having put, well, having been, well, having put that effort into the business, I thought to myself, you know what? Seeing that my boss wants to move in, 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 in other business and other industries, I think this is my time to start, to actually start my, my, my own. And I faced him and, and, and we had, a, we had a, a lengthy chat. And he said, well, if that's, that the route you want, that you, if that's the route you want to take, I'm willing to support you. And very, very humble beginnings. Very humble beginnings. Horrible. Um, when I left, it's not that I had, I had a, a client base in mind to say, from this, I know I'm going to approach this particular client and that and that. Well, I had a couple of clients in mind, but one thing that I, I, I said to myself, you know, ethics are very important in business. I vouch, I said to myself, I'm not going to take any of mm. um, uh, uh, NSA's client. I'm going to start on my own because I want to make this thing work. After three months, um, having left the company, on the third month, I got a call um, from NUM because some of the uh, uh, people working in, they, they knew me that, they knew me within the industry. They approached me and they said, we've approached a, a, a few other companies, we need a proposal, we've got this, this challenge. And, and I had to put a proposal up. And this is the National Union of Mine National, Workers National here Union in South Africa. Workers. Now this is a big story because as uh, sadly we know in the news that the mines are becoming increasingly <laughs> unsafe places. So for people like yourself with private security, how much of a, a, a new business is this for you? You know what, um, and I think as you understand, we, we, we because what I do for, for the NUM mainly, it's okay, it's, it's, it's guarding and, and VIP protection. What I needed to have the, this, this, you, you can't just go there and, and say, I'll protect people mm. um, uh, uh, anyhow. You need to have certain equipment, you need to have firearms. And the process of applying for firearms in this country, it's, it's, mm. it's, 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 it's a headache, it, it takes forever. But when I started then, uh, I was introduced to a guy who's based in Rustenburg, and I thought to myself, the best way to start is to subcontract. Mm -hmm. And I did subcontract. But um, I think some men still have this thing in their mind to say, oh, well, no, she's just a female. She doesn't know anything. Because, oh, well, the, this person that I was introduced to doesn't know that I've got uh, the background. Now, for me, it was you empowering someone who's, who's within the area, not the northwest, the northwest area, and he, he was involved in, in his own business, which never worked out. So for him, well, he's, he's, an, he's an entrepreneur himself. And I think the two minds together, him and I, will, 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 will work together well. But I think after a month, his was to just to get his foot in the door and you know, with the hope that he's, he might afterwards um, take advantage of, of, of the situation or kick me out. And uh, I, 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 I'm just opening up because these are, the, these are some of the challenges that I think as women that, that, that we face. We started together and when I realized that this is the route that he wants to take, because one thing though that I made sure we signed, it, we signed an agreement, mm. 
And I approached him, I said, but you are in breach of the agreement. Now two things, it's either you come in as an employee or we, we break the, uh, 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 well, we terminate the, the contract. And one thing that I'm grateful of is that having been, I'm, 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 I'm very hands-on, um, I would still, as much as I, was sub, I had subcontracted to him, but every week I was there, we had meetings, I met with the staff because I wanted to know exactly what's, what's going on. That's what made, that's why I was, I, I was alert at the very early stages of, 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 of the... How tough do you have to be, you think, to make it in the security business, whether you're a man or a woman? Um, you, you know what? Uh, I always say, if, if you have a strong mind, that's what will carry you. Because I don't believe in, in shouting and screaming. And I'm not that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, I even say, even in meetings, I won't, I won't rock up in meetings wearing a, a, a combat uniform mm -hmm. to try a, <laughs> and, and prove that I'm this macho person. I think when, 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 when people sit down and, and they get to understand and when they connect with you and they understand that you understand what you're doing and you're sincere and, and uh, about what you're doing and, and you're there for their needs, that's what, that's what really, really what, matters. What do you think makes an entrepreneur? What do you think? Um, well, sure. What makes an entrepreneur? Because um, for, well, I think, I think for a start, you need to have that idea. Um, like the qualities of a person, you think, to make it? Or is it just like you, you need to you need to you need to have a strong mind uh, without a doubt because things don't always go according to to your plan um, you need to have the drive the, te the, the tenacity um, and and as I'm saying the drive because you know at times you, you, you get disappointed so many times and if you're a person who's not who, who's not a fighter sure you can always give up and when someone says because uh, sometimes you go and approach clients and if a client says but I've got a, 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 a position open in the company. You know, I think you do well in this. So if, you, if you're not an entrepreneur, you, you'll just give up and even want to take that offer <laughs> that they want to offer you. So um, yeah, so that, that drive, it's, 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 that strong will is, is, is very important. And um, understanding that at the beginning, you're not going to uh, make the money that you, because I think most people think that entrepreneurs are out there and it takes a while before you get to the level where you can say now I'm really making it and or to even start seeing the profits because whatever it is that you make it's important to put back in, into the business. Well, best of luck.